Okay, good evening, everybody. And uh, welcome to the first of three public forums that the Town Manager Search Committee is hosting as we begin the process of replacing our longstanding Chris Whalen as Town Manager. <clears throat> Up at the front here with me are members of the Town Manager Search Committee, Dina Whitfield, Alice Kaufman, Steve Verrill, and Peggy Briggs. And next to Peggy, uh, Peggy is uh, Buzz uh, Truschinski, who is from MRI, Management Resource, Municipal Resources, Inc., that is a consulting firm that the search committee has employed to help us with this process. So I'm Mike Lawson, a member of the search committee, and we'll sit up here and be listeners, but uh, Buzz will be sort of the master of ceremonies of this meeting tonight, so let me turn it over to Buzz, and as he comes up here, I'll remind the listening audience that we two additional forums. One is tomorrow at 8 a.m. at 55 Church Street, and the second is at 1 p.m. at the Harvey Wheeler Community Center. And if you aren't able to attend tonight, I hope you'll be able to join us at one of those two forums tomorrow. Buzz? Yes, sir, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, as Mike said, my name is Buzz Stabchinski. I'm with uh, MRI, that's Municipal Resources, Inc. And they're a consulting firm that uh, specializes in municipal work. We do all manner of municipal consulting, from uh, recruitment and selections uh, that we're doing here in Concord, to um, management studies, to capital improvement plans, to personnel work, paying classification plans, job descriptions, pay plans, uh, any kind of uh, municipal uh, uh, work, consulting work that uh, a municipality might need. We're, as I said, we're based in New Hampshire, Meredith, New Hampshire. I happen to come from Andover, Massachusetts, and the, uh, the reach of the company is New England. We have uh, contracts from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, um, so we're really a, a New England-based company. And uh, my own background, just to let you know, I'm um, uh, about 40 years of municipal experience. I was town manager most recently in Andover, Massachusetts for 25 years. And uh, I retired three years ago. And people say, well, you know, you guys are going to move. You're going to go south. You're going to go, you know, north. What are you going to do? And I said, look, I spent 25 years getting this town right. I'm going to enjoy my life, and I am doing that. I'm having a great time doing consulting. And in fact, the, um, uh, all your neighbors, thank God, had hired us to, to do recruitment and selections for their town managers. A year ago, we were in Acton, did the, the search for the town manager in Acton. Shortly after that, we were very fortunate to get the assignment engagement in Bedford and found a wonderful young lady for the town manager there. And then the sun shined on us in Lexington. And uh, we were fortunate to get that engagement as well and found a terrific fellow to take the job in Lexington. And um, I want to thank your select board for this engagement. Uh, we enjoy this kind of work. It's, a, it's kind of a specialty of, of myself and, and my colleague, uh, Bob Mercier, Bob couldn't be with us. Uh, Bob has spent some time here interviewing um, selectmen, department heads, and others. Has anybody been interviewed by Bob? Okay, so you, some of you folks have met Bob. You had a chance to, to talk to him and get, um, uh, for him to get your ideas and whatnot. Bob comes from, um, uh, well, he's been a town manager here in a number of places, but most recently, uh, he, he did two stints in uh, Burlington. He didn't have enough the first time. They wanted him back for an encore. So he was uh, town administrator twice in, uh, in Burlington, and then he did a long uh, stint in, um, in Bill Ricca, and he's been acting in Wayland, uh, Boxborough, and um, a couple of other small towns. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that MRI does is we, we do uh, short-term assignments uh, interims. If, uh, if a select board or board of selectmen can't find a, uh, a manager immediately, they will hire our firm and, and we'll put somebody in for uh, 
a period of two months, four months, six months, whatever it is. Uh, so w with that as, uh, as kind of an introduction about our firm, we're meeting three times. We're soliciting comments uh, from folks about several things. One is uh, the profile. If you could design the DNA of your next manager, what would she or he look like? What are the characteristics? What are the traits? You know, uh, you want somebody young, old. You want somebody from far, near. And just, just to let you know, in uh, Bedford, <laughs> we got this application from a guy from Hawaii. So I, I, I told the boss, uh, I said, okay, I'll call him. So I said, what is your interest in Bedford? Well, he said, I, uh, I, was, I, I grew up in, uh, in, North, uh, in North Andover, uh, graduated from high school in North Andover. My folks moved to uh, Hawaii, and I, I've lived there for the last 20 years, interested in coming back. And so, you know, you, we, we, we get people in, in another town. We had a, um, a military guy, guy from NATO. He was, uh, uh, I don't know if it was Air Force or whatever in NATO. The, the, the application came from Belgium. It's like, who in the world? But, you know, people in the world, uh, we're all familiar with the internet. And when this job goes live, uh, you know, I just came back from five weeks in Singapore. If somebody in Singapore says, you know, I think I'd like to go back to Concord, they'll just look on the website and bam, 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 we'll get, we'll get the application. So it's a, it's a different world today than it was 28, 29 years ago when Chris was hired. Was anybody on the, on the board or involved in, in Chris's search? Because the, what's that? term limit. All right. Well, I thought there may be some, some veterans who had served, uh, you know, in, in, in 92, because, you know, the, the, the world then is not the world of today. Newspapers, you know, we did the Boston Globe. We may, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put something in the Boston Globe if the search committee wants, but let me tell you, the, the people who are interested in this job we're gonna, are going to get this from, uh, you know, the uh, MMA website, the Mass Municipal Association. If, if you haven't been on their website, it's very robust in terms of, of, of jobs for the folks interested in the municipal world. Uh, ICMA, the International City Management Association, people will be looking on that. Uh, they'll go, they'll find their way to your website. They'll come to MRI. MRI's website. So there's um, a, a whole new kind of search that goes on today than what happened when Chris was hired. Uh, the, the other thing is that um, for those of you who are in the uh, business of hiring folks for your own companies, your own businesses, you will know that the labor market is incredibly tight. I would say across the board for all, I'll make a gross of statement here, for all jobs, but it is a tough labor market. And one of the challenges that we have in Massachusetts, and not just for municipal jobs, is, uh, and we'll probably hear about this today, is the cost of housing. You know, we can bring somebody in from um, another town, we brought a, a young planner from, um, <laughs> Shawnee, Oklahoma. Now the average house in Shawnee, Oklahoma is what, maybe $200,000? He went down to Hanover, Massachusetts to be the planner. And I hope he and his wife looked at Zilla to see what they were going to be faced with. But he came here, interviewed, got the job, and hopefully he's, they are over the sticker shock. But all across Massachusetts, it's not just here, it, it, you know, it, it's, uh, it's across Massachusetts and probably a good part of New England. Uh, there is sticker shock for people coming in from other parts of the world. Uh, so with that as, as, as kind of background, uh, we're here to listen. I'm here to listen to the characteristics of the manager, also the challenges. 
Uh, looked at your newspaper, Concord Journal today, went to the li beautiful library. I love libraries. This is a beautiful library. And, uh, you know, right up front, traffic, speeding. Uh, you know, the, the, I'm, we're interested to hear about that because these are our, our issues that the next manager challenges that the next manager is going to have to face. The, you know, they're, they're not going away. The, the, that's part of the challenges that we want to hear about. So not only the characteristics of, 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 of the next manager, but the challenges that the community will face that he or she will have to deal with over the years. So it's really open mic, and if folks want to grab the mic or stand up or queue up or uh, raise your hand. I don't want to start calling on people. <laughs> I'm going to call on my friend Anita. I go way back with Anita. You folks have been so fortunate to have her in this town. I don't want to tell you how many years I go back with her. Well, it's about 40. I, um, I think oh, you gave it away. <laughs> Uh, Anita Techley, uh, former town clerk, former assistant town manager here, and I worked with three managers, as Buzz knows, um, but lived in town for 41 years now. W one thing that I would love to see, as much as we want diversity, we want, uh, we don't want to exclude someone from Hawaii or California or Singapore, um, but a familiarity with New England town meeting form of government, I think, is is critical and not just knowing about it but really respecting it we've we've had not not in our fortunately we've been had great um, town managers here in Concord and all of them came with some New England experience but we've had other public officials that came from around the country that never really embraced our form of government the open meeting law um, and the basic New England municipal for um, the way we do things in New England, which really is different from the way you do it in Texas or Oklahoma, and um, so I would I would hope that that would be considered by the committee when you're seeking someone out, not just someone who needs a job, but someone who really um, understands and is willing to respect our form of government. That to me would be at the top of the list. Thank you. Spoken like a true town clerk. <laughs> the protector of town meeting. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, John Hickling, 111 Monument Street. Um, two questions I would have for a prospective town manager would be their view on zero-based budgeting and whether that is something that, in their estimation, be worthy of the town considering. And the second challenge uh, going forward that I would ask would be with respect to certain costs, and the one I have in mind is the OPEB, the other post-employment benefit costs, that if they were to continue at the recent pace over the last 10 years would be, would be all-consuming. Those would be two questions uh, that I would ask of a prospective uh, Town manager came And they're good yeah. ones. OPEB, you must be on the finance committee, sir. I noticed there's no representation on the search committee from the finance committee. Big, it, that is a huge issue. Uh, yes, ma'am. I don't think the mic is on. It is difficult to hear. All right. It's usually it's just for TV. So, is it possible to repeat the question, perhaps? Yes, sir, why don't you... Uh, all right. The, the, wait, hold on. Is this mic working? This is not rocket science. Here we go. Oh. Is this... Is this on? Ask the young man to. Uh... Are the speakers working? Here we go. All right, now now we're on. I'm going to hand the mic to this young man, and he can restate his question. Okay, certainly. So the first question was, 
uh, zero based budgeting yep. and the opinion and the view and the justification. Did you hold it up by your mouth? Well, did you have to do really talk into it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can. Zero based budgeting. The second is what do we do about OPEB for the next 10 years? And the third is I noticed there's no one from the Finance Committee on the Search Committee. All right, now, do, do people know what OPEB is? This is going to be on the exam. OPEB, Other Post Employment Benefits, and it's typically health insurance. It, it, it could be life insurance, but typically it's the benefits that an, a retiree gets post employment. Huge problem for cities and towns. It, I, I don't want to get into it because it, there's no simple answer except that you got to pay attention to it. And uh, you're, particularly your rating agencies and the manager has to be, you're right, yeah, he has to be cognizant of <clears throat> the issues with regard to, to OPAB. Uh, yes, sir. Ned Perry, 20, uh, 362 Bedford Street. Uh, congratulations to the consultant for identifying a member of the Finance Committee from the questions. He actually is on the Finance Committee. Um, <coughs> I'm hoping that uh, all of you, and it look, looks like a start of a really good committee, uh, will look within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for um, the, at the hierarchy of the town governments that we have, uh, and to do a wide search within the Commonwealth. Uh, having been involved with the town government uh, over the years and having been president of the Massachusetts Moderators Association, I well know that the town governments throughout the Commonwealth are in different tiers. And we're very fortunate in Concord to be among the highest, in the uh, highest tier. And so that people throughout the municipal government uh, whether they're in public works or whether they're in schools or whether they're um, in the clerk's office, um, look to Concord for openings and opportunities. And I hope that you'll do a, a broad search and a wide search and not have uh, a focus on inside candidates as much as outside candidates because there are some terrific town managers out there. I hope that you'll also use Anita and myself and other people who've been in statewide organizations to do research for you or background information searches for you from our colleagues. I have all the town moderators across the Commonwealth um, would be willing to communicate with me about people within their towns. Um, most importantly, um, as you know, the charter of the, of the town has a detailed uh, description, the powers and duties of our town manager. During our town government study committee, Peggy will remember, that we discovered that there are two duties that aren't listed in the charter that we felt were fairly significant. Uh, that is the capital planning uh, wasn't mentioned in the charter, and long-range planning, financial forecasting, and enterprise fund are not mentioned in the charter. So those two things, if you're putting together a job description and looking for knowledge across the board, I hope that those two facets will be included in your search. Thank you very much, and thank you. Thank you. Please. Not so easy. You, yes, uh, Ned, you said you wanted us to do a wide, the exact words are wide search within the Commonwealth. Were you suggesting that we limit it to town managers that have worked within the Commonwealth or not? And secondly, when you said tiers, I wasn't sure uh, that you whether or not you meant like town administrator, town manager, strong town manager, you know, those kind of tiers, or big town, poor town, small town, out of town. So. Maybe you could just clarify those couple Rel things. Relative to um, Anita's comments earlier, Ms. Techley's comments earlier, excuse me, uh, or the comments of an earlier speaker, um, I do think there is something about the New England town meeting and, and form of government that is unique for New England. 
subsidiary of that is that the, it's Massachusetts town governance is unique to itself. So if you can find a good, a good set of candidates within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, they are going to be that much better off dealing with Boston, dealing with the uh, legislatures, the, the laws and statutes of Massachusetts. Having participated in the main state of main town meetings now for a couple of years, they can be very different than the Commonwealth of Massachusetts town meetings. Uh, and and other, uh, other s statutes in the state of New Hampshire, they have a, quite a different mechanism for town meetings. So I would focus on Massachusetts. Relative to tiers, if, I, I think you've participated in the Massachusetts Municipal Association meetings. Most selectmen have, select women, select persons have, and in those meetings you understand that Wellesley and Lexington, Concord, Andover talk to each other about their issues. They don't talk to Grafton or Otis or Berkshire County, county towns because they're so much different and so much smaller. Um, and people in, however, people in Otis and Grafton and um, other smaller towns, Florida, in the Berkshires would like to move east and move up the, the ladder in the municipal government. So I think they're, Concord is within the, really the top tier of, we're so fortunate to have the employees that we have throughout town government, starting with Chris. And if there is one factor that I appreciate of Chris Whalen, it's the fact that he's inclusive. There were people over the course of my tenure as town moderator who could be said as, viewed as troublemakers. And some were on my staff and some were on other staffs. And I always gave Chris the opportunity to say, oh, well, then maybe you could find someone else. Never did that. He always wanted to have everybody working hard and working together. And so I'd like to have someone who uh, can work with everybody, as Chris has, I believe, been able to work with everybody. Any other questions from the? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I've spoken my bit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good comments, all. All right, folks, don't be shy. We got an open mic here. My name is Michael McAteer, and uh, I've lived in Concord about 30 years, which is has been long enough to recognize what leadership looks like, and I think in this town we, ha we have a tremendous leadership. And I think about a couple of different characteristics that I hope that we would search for in individuals who we want to put in that kind of leadership position, is that one, they would be very, very strong collaborators. Um, in, in my time in management, I've begun to recognize that. The, the complexities and the problems and challenges that we face are no longer solvable by superstars. That they're solvable by bringing talent together. And sort of what Ned was, was, was suggesting is that you bring people together and when you harness that collaboration, you end up with a far better solution than, than trying, to, trying to do it, do, do it yourself. So collaboration is, is, I think, a key thing. And the other piece that I would hope that we would find an individual is someone who comes with a vision, someone who um, thinks differently. Uh, the world is changing at a pace around us that we really need to begin to have some sense of where we want to go from where we have been if we want to be able to continue to be the kind of community we have. And so not just doing things as we have done in the past, but to imagine differently and to build good governance around it and to use data, but to, but to have a true um, course and a future and a vision and a roadmap that uh, will bring us into this future that we all imagine uh, is capable with, with the right people. So I think those are two things I hope we find. Thank you. I think one of the things that <coughs> is going to be important for the new manager is the, um, the uh, Envision Concord. 
uh, that report. And we will have that on our website because anybody who is interested in this community has got to read that and understand it if they're going to be serious about coming here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sandy Harper. I live in Hawthorne Village. I've been in Concord for about 18 years. I just want to build on the idea of leadership. I think you want somebody who's also very open and who's really good at building partnerships, teams and, and people that you need to work with within a town. You have a lot of different kinds of teams. You have volunteers, you have paid staff, you have the person who's lived here forever, the person who's just coming, the person who does have new vision. And you need somebody who's gonna be able to listen and use that information and build those partnerships to take the town where we need to go. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Joanne Gibson, 88 Walden Street, and I've lived here for 50 years, which is kind of embarrassing, actually, going right down to it. But um, I hope you find a, somebody who is very much like Chris, because I think Chris, what? Yeah, OK. Okay, um, I hope you find somebody who's very much like Chris. I think he's been wonderful in that he has a very much of a can-do attitude. He wants to get to yes. And I've been in meetings with other administrators and other situations who don't want to get to yes. Um, I think he, and I want somebody who will sort of understand Concord, which is pretty darn unique. Um, and I don't know, I'm sure people from outside of Massachusetts might get us, but somebody who understands a town as opposed to a, a, to a county government. Um, somebody who's, who's, um, who honors the fact that historic preservation and environment are extremely important to us, but so are the business interests in, important to us. So it's a real balancing act, and there's a lot of real advocates on each side, and so the collaborative piece is important. And um, I agree traffic is a real problem, too. I mean, there's going to be a lot of sort of mundane things. But while we look ahead, we've got to look back, too, because this isn't, I mean, it's an historic town. And so maybe somebody from Shawnee, wherever that was, <laughs> might not get us. And I hope all the good people haven't been taken. It sounds like every town manager in Massachusetts has been up for grabs. Oh, dear. OK, well, oh. get a good one. <laughs> Thanks. The, uh, the you know, you're right. This is a desirable community, and it's no uh, mystery that that, that <clears throat> some of the better towns and managers are aging out, retiring, moving on to do other things. So there are some uh, folks looking at this town, just as they were folks looking at the other ones that I'd mentioned. And um, so I, I don't think we're going to have an issue uh, finding talent here. I think the issue for the search committee is finding someone who has the fit or having three to five people that have uh, the fit to recommend to the Board of Selectmen. You know, a AAA community with your reputation, there are, there are uh, women and men out there just waiting for this opportunity. My name is Shelley Amster. I'm at 44 Prairie Street, and I'm almost 30 years living here. It's hard to comprehend. Um, and I live right across from Throw School, and I got to see um, the growth of our town. We moved here and watched this little school across the street grow and how the town came together um, to make um, this place the place we wanted to grow our family, well, have our family and, and um, sustain our lives. My brother is a civil engineer um, and runs a very successful firm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I often pick his brain because he gets to meet with many town planners around mostly New Hampshire and Maine. And um, I share with him some of my frustrations. For instance, what's going on in Main Street <clears throat> in West Concord with this piece of property that to me 
I hope our town is smart enough to not put in 38 homes in a piece of property that you talk about a traffic jam, we're going to be adding a lot of homes. Um, and they're all monstrous homes. And we have a sustainability plan um, that I don't believe is being really looked at firmly that every one of those homes should be having solar heat um, and different ways of self-sustaining it, every single one of them, and less cars. And, um, <clears throat> and so I'm, I'm looking for somebody. I think um, we've had a great town planner, a, ma a manager, um, and I hope that there's something in place that he stays on for a year and tr helps transition the, the next person because this isn't an easy community. Most of us are so well educated. Most of us are in very senior management roles. We all come with our own agendas and we do work hard to try to work together, but it takes that one person who has that magic sauce that is able to bring all the different groups together. I mean, we've got a lot of tension going on. I've got a toxic dog situation in my neighborhood that is scary. Um, and there's been this whole thing with Estabrook, um, lawyers and all this thing. I hope that we have some kind of control over all the legal issues and the expenses that we're spending on lawyers. Um, so I know I'm running my self and I apologize for it, but um, I think it just takes somebody that can continue to look at our ecosystem, our sustainability, and stop building all these big homes and look at our history um, and build on our history for the future. Thank you. Yes, please others. Yes, sir. Um, I just, I want, to, I'm Brad Hubbard Nelson, uh, uh, and I've been here 19 years, not that long. And there are people on the committee that know more about this than I, but I wanted to uh, add to the previous commentator about uh, a new town manager who will really embrace what has been happening with sustainability. And I'm very proud to live here because we are one of a very few uh, towns called an eco-municipality that have these principles that we have agreed to, to go by. There's one in Massachusetts, that's here. There's one in New Hampshire. 30 in Wisconsin and 100 of them in Sweden. Um, and that's something I think we should be proud of. I don't know if the job does the, I'm interested in whether the job description attracts someone who is going to see that and say that um, that's something that's really interested, interesting to me. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I think sustainability is a, a theme that we can work into uh, the challenges. I mean, sustainability has uh, many, f m many uh, uh, cousins. You've got the budget sustainability. You know, we, we gentleman mentioned OPEP, the, the sustainability of, of benefits to post-retirement, the sustainability of building construction, uh, sustainability of, of vehicles. I was speaking in particular about environmental. environmental. Thank you. Please. Ryan Bucus. Uh, one of the things that uh, concerns me a little is uh, the possibility that we get a town manager who sees uh, himself or herself as a chief executive <coughs> dealing with department heads and as opposed to someone who is manager with respect to the whole town and who recognizes that each of those department heads has usually a committee of volunteers selected with great effort by the moderator, uh, by the selectmen and so forth, people who put in enormous amounts of time unpaid to help run the town. But it has happened that there have been department heads who have not been responsive to their uh, committees. Uh, the select uh, select board, forgive me, the members of the select board have been very forward in sending members of the board out to and assigning different members of the board to different committees and, and departments within the town in order to see what goes on in those committees. And I think it's, it's important that 
a town manager uh, actively test uh, what is going on in each of these broader committees so as to see that the, that the t inputs which are coming from the broader town uh, may uh, influence uh, the heads of those departments. Because if we have a, a chief executive dealing only with a cabinet of professionals, uh, then we miss a great uh, feature of our town, which is the input from a very broad base of generally, as pointed out, very well-educated, very concerned, and very skilled citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, hi. Um, Arthur Walker, and I'm at 13 Chestnut Street, and I'm a 50-year uh, resident of Concord. My wife was born here. I'm a licensed tour guide, and uh, as, as such, I'm a keenly aware that Concord is sort of in a historic uh, way, and in other senses, a beacon to uh, the world as well as the U.S., uh, uh, considering the North Bridge and, uh, and the uh, history of the Concord authors. Uh, being a member of the Thoreau Society, I, I'm aware that Concord is the world headquarters, you might say, of Thoreau and, and Thoreau scholarship and everything going on uh, Thoreau. Uh, so I think that uh, one uh, quality in looking for a town manager would be um, someone who would be able to look at the spectrum of history, seeing Concord's past and how it flows into the future, and, and definitely uh, be a forward-looking uh, person with uh, re regard to the town, but uh, also be rooted in what Concord's history means to the world as, as, uh, as sort of a global beacon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Y yes, ma'am. Uh, Kitsy Rothermel, 330 Musketaquid Road. And I'd kind of like to follow a little bit on what Reiner Bukas said about the relationship between the town manager and the department heads. Um, what I would really like to see and I think with Chris, we've had it to some extent, maybe not as much as I would like to see, but the kind of thing that has happened in the schools, where we've gone from a fairly strong top-down superintendent to the kind of a superintendent who reaches out, she wants to hear what people have to say, and there's a broad-based communication going back and forth. And I think that's huge. My second thing is totally unrelated, but I would hope that we have a town manager who is a really good public speaker. I think that's been a huge strength of Chris's. He gets up at town meeting, and they say the town manager is going to present, present something, and everybody's quiet. I think it makes a big difference. And whether that comes with the territory, I don't know, but I think that's important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good points. Others? We're all the young people. <laughs> <laughs> We have some new residents right here. Hi. Hi. Go Pats. Um, my name's Helen Brady. I, work, I live at 1631 Monument Street. I'm used to saying I work at. Um, I've been here almost 14 years, like I said, and um, because of my background, my business background is performing arts, I also am looking at this search that you have, similar to what we would do when looking for a managing director of the symphony. There's so many players. <coughs> And we have to get the best players, and we have to listen to the union, and we have to listen to our patrons, and so that person um, has to have an awful lot of qualities, especially um, negotiating salaries with unions and that sort of thing. But um, one of something that kind of always struck me as strange, just from where I live and from my personal back, uh, my business background, is that. There's so much business opportunity that we just let go out the door. And I think the town, and I have spoken at length at this at different Chamber of Commerce meetings. So I hope that whoever you choose 
understands the value of um, the history here, which people have spoken about, but also figure out the best way to maximize the incredible numbers of tourists that come here. They're literally leaving here after they go to the North Bridge. They're not coming to our shops, whether they're in West Concord or here. So somebody really has to understand that that's a big part of, of uh, could be even bigger of our tax base um, revenue. So I see that hopefully this person will understand there are buses and there are people and we don't want to sit in traffic anymore, but these are country roads. And as buildings go up and whatnot, it just always seems to me, whether it's in Concord or Boston where I work, nobody takes into account the number of cars that come with those houses or those residences. So there's so much, uh, like I said, I mean, I, I don't want this job, clearly, but um, the poor person who does, um, they really have to have um, a vision to bring in some revenue here. And I'm telling you, the amount of money that goes out, there are about 50 people on every bus. I, I work with tour operators all over the country, all over the world, and I am amazed that nobody has caught them. They just leave. That's revenue. That, that helps at me. I'm, I'm a resident. I want to see more revenue here. Friends of mine own shops. They, gosh, they could do an unbelievable business, and any town would kill for that kind of tourism traffic. So, um, and also, um, 28 years is a long time for a town manager, and I'm just wondering, is there ever any discussion about Capping that, you know, maybe 15 years is enough. We, we, when does the, uh, you know, diminishing returns happen? I don't know. I've not been here long enough to, to really make that judgment call, but it's something to think about. Thank you. All right, you know, the, the whole tourism thing is, uh, is important, and we've heard it uh, in other municipalities. Uh, you know, there's some towns that have uh, taken this on, I'm thinking of Newburyport in particular, and the mayor has, you know, an office of tourism, or it may, it may just be one person, and that person's responsibility is to, you know, ma make sure that the, the tourists uh, who, who, <laughs> who come stay for a period of time and have dinner and, and, and shop and all that. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a new skill in the municipal world. Uh, but it's a very good point. And in terms of term limit, I was, I was at town manager for 25 years, so that kind of strikes at, at the heart of... <laughs> but it's not working. It's, it's working. <coughs> I think the ministry is always working that. Certain you know, people are in too long in certain jobs. We all know who those people are. We work with them. So that's all I'm saying. No, and I, and I, I get it, and I was kind of playing with you on that. Thank you. Um, all right. Please. I'm Elise Woodward. I live on Garfield Road. I want to say thank you for holding these meetings. They're um, very valuable. Um, I think the Comprehensive Long Range Plan uh, well characterizes many of the tensions um, that will exist um, in Concord, and um, I would hope that a town manager will be a strong leader, um, an articulate speaker. Um, but mostly I hope the town manager will be a steward, a steward of Concord, of, um, of the history and the unique aspects of this town. And I hope that the town manager, the new town manager will be accessible to the citizens. Although the town manager is not elected, I do think that the citizens of the town are his or her constituents. So I hope that um, the new manager will be um, as accessible, at least as accessible oh, if... So I'm not here to be um, specific, I'm but, but I have found Chris Whalen to be very accessible, that it's possible to walk in and make an appointment with him um, at one's convenience, and so that I have valued quite a bit. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> one of the things that has to be made clear, to your point, to uh, any serious candidate is that it, this is not a nine-to-five job. That if you're not here on Patriot's Day, or if you're not here on, on the other high holy days in the community, it, it, it'll be noted. Uh, 
it's, and I think the, the candidates, anybody who's serious will understand that. It is, it, it, that's, I, in many respects, the fun part of the job is the public aspect of it uh, and, the avail and your availability to the residents. All right, others? Hi, thank you for uh, good luck with this process. Um, I'm Susan Bates, I live at Concord Green, and I just wanted to follow up on what Ms. Brady said about the tourism and also what Ms. Woodward said about the long range plan. One of the, what I picked up, one of the main themes of the long range plan is collaboration, which you've already talked about, but not just within the departments in the town, in the wider community with the nonprofits, the historic groups, and specifically with reference to tourism, there are places in town that are working on this independently, like the museum and the national parks and a lot of other arts organizations. So I think that there's uh, expertise out there that the town doesn't have to really reinvent this, but in a collaborative manner, which is what the um, long range plan suggests that this is one of the things that would be, could be very successful by including um, the other organizations in town. Because I think it's on a lot of people's minds or organizations who want to remain viable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Mario Favorito. I Yep. <clears throat> is that better? Much. My name is Mar Mario Favorito. I've lived in town about 50 years, so I'm sort of a newcomer. Uh, and uh, I've been through Paul Flynn, Steve Schaefer, Brand X, and Chris Whalen. And I was on the, s the committee that selected the three finalists that were presented to the select board, which included Chris, which was a gazillion years ago. Um, one, uh, a lot of my thinking has already been, been said, but I think there are, uh, uh, when I, I read the job description that the select people have approved, it says something like, um, uh, familiarity with a town meeting form of government is desirable. I think it's mandatory. I mean, we're a town that has adopted the town meeting form of government, and that, and that goes, <laughs> has a lot that goes with it. We have a town that relies on volunteers who are uh, opinionated and educated and need to be dealt with responsibly and uh, respectfully. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, uh, we, we need someone who is not necessarily the CNO, CEO type. I mean, you've got to be able to reach out, got to be able to communicate. You've got to be able to have people recognize you as a leader, not because you're wearing the bars, but because people respect you and, and you're out, outgoing. Uh, I remember when we were going through uh, trying to select a candidate uh, uh, and we had candidates who could do the job in their sleep. Uh, we found Chris who hardly knew anything but he was a stretch candidate and he you know, w worked out well. So the soft characteristics are, are going to be very important, very difficult to deal with and you need to have somebody who understands our kind of town, uh, and um, it's uh, uh, and who's uh, able to to reach out, communicate in a collegial way. So enough said. All right, Mario. Thank you. And, and just to build on that, one of the things that we always tell our clients is that the uh, the Chris Whalen that you have today, at uh, age whatever he is, at uh, 28 years of experience isn't the Chris Whalen that started in 1993. 
so I, the, the challenge for the committee when we uh, are talking about candidates is do, do you want somebody, <clears throat> do they want to present somebody who can stand on the front steps of, of, of the town house, look over Monument Square and know where the bodies are buried and, and have the experience because they've been there and done that in, in other places to, to know how to do the job versus someone that <clears throat> may come up from the Cape who's 35 years old, young family, you know, doesn't have that previous kind of experience, but you have faith in and you think you can build on it. And that's the guy you had in Chris. He, he was five years in Sandwich. Uh, I checked out his resume today uh, before he came up here. So you took a chance on a guy 35 years old. That's what, that's what we did. Now, that's, that's, a, that's a model. It's, but you really have to be sensitive to going with someone who could go to the job in his or her suit as opposed to someone who's got some basic skills, communication, understands the kind of time it is, and then move, move forward with that. And nothing is certain in your life, so you're going to have to take some risk. Right. Uh, soft qualities and leadership qualities are important, and it's the kind of leadership qualities that such where people can understand the person and how the person leads as opposed to the person saying, I'm the CEO, follow me. It doesn't work. It's not going to work here. Thank you, sir. Good words indeed. Please. Yeah, it's, it's hard to follow something yeah, as yeah. thorough and as lovely as that. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Diane Proctor, and although I'm the president of the League of Women Voters, I'm not speaking for them, and I want to make that clear. Um, the individuals will say something <laughs> who are part of it. But I bring up the League because it's one of the many organizations in our town uh, that is deeply committed to and interested in the way our town government works and operates. Uh, we have an observer corps that, that sits and, and observes almost every committee meeting. We are engaged continuously in the life of the town and government. And there are two qualities that as I've watched the town and thought about it for a long time uh, that I think are the most important and perhaps have not quite been mentioned, but they play with Mario's sense of softness, the qualities that are less easily perhaps to discern. The first is a lack of defensiveness, a defensiveness, um, an ability to kind of put an idea forward and hear alternative perspectives and grow with what other people have to say. It's been said in other ways, but I think that that quality seems to me terribly important. And the second, and I think in perhaps the most important is optimism. A sense of what's possible that doesn't look at the, the world as a glass one quarter full, but looks at things as, as prob possible, probable to possible, um, and, and tries to find the people in our community, because my goodness is it talented, to find the people in our community who can lead forward and, and create those very things that we all imagine and then it is together. And that's the third quality, is that we do whatever we do collaboratively. I'm reminded of a recent article that came before the town, uh, which was the White Pond gift to the town. An incredibly generous and wonderful opportunity for all of us, and yet it came with some costs. And those costs were not always as fully presented and imagined as they might have been. And so there was a certain tension in the town um, about how we, how we moved forward with this gift and what do we do. Um, I think trusting the instincts uh, of, this, of this community, trusting that the more they know and the more that, that we're open and transparent with each other, uh, the more beautifully we move forward together. So those would be the qualities I would hope we would look for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Thank you. I'm Mark Galis. I live at 62 Prescott Road. Uh, one thing uh, I've observed in cases where I've, I've been involved in hiring process is that it's really a two-way street in terms of communication about what, you know, it's not just what the candidate brings to the town, but what the town offers to the candidate, which is, I think, much more than a, a job. 
uh, including all the great expertise of the <laughs> committees and various uh, upstanding citizens and organizations in town. Um, I want to speak about three things that I think myself are very important. Um, and I think they're so important because the town manager is the one who sets the uh, tone, establishes priorities and the culture for all the town departments. First one, what I'd like to see is someone with an awareness of the value of and a commitment to, to what I would call a policy of proactive transparency. Second one is someone with collaborative skills to help all of us guide the town into a state of greater financial sustainability, including all the major uh, fund requiring uh, entities in the town. And the third one, a commitment to ecological protection and in fact enhancement in our town. So as far as, as the proactive transparency goes, uh, we have an interesting symbiotic relationship in this town between town departments, boards and committees, and the citizens at large. When we make collective decisions that affect us or the town for 10, 20, 50, or even 100 years, we shouldn't rush them, okay? We need to all be in the know right from the beginning. There's a temptation to be efficient by taking shortcuts, but experience shows shortcuts can make long, painful, costly delays and a lot of upset people. We also need to avail ourselves of all the experts in the town, put a lot of ideas on the table. I completely agree with some of the comments about uh, sometimes um, it's easy for boards to be intimidated by professionals, but boards have good people and a lot of ideas and maybe more knowledge on the ground and maybe more skin in the game in certain ways uh, than the professional uh, staff. As far as financial sustainability, I would like the uh, town manager, to, again, to have these collaborative skills to join up with the excellent work by recently by the Finance Committee, School Committee, and Administration to balance needs and cost and, uh, you know, kind of uh, trim this uh, rain in this town's uh, uh, tax inflation history or trajectory. Third one, ecological values and benefits. Um, we start from a better position than a lot of communities, but that means we have more to lose. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, trees in residential neighborhoods cut down, uh, wetlands kind of impinged on, et cetera. Many, many benefits flow from our natural environment, farming, flood protection, health, tourism, history, uh, recreation, et cetera, uh, quality of the town. Um, and I think a lot of my fellow citizens are under the misapprehension that the Natural Resource Co Commission has a lot more legal authority than it does. There are a lot of independent groups trying to do things, but you know, the town manager is the one who would uh, set the tone and to be kind of in uh, conclusion, being a little more specific, um, if I go to the planning division website, there's a statement that says mission statement and there are four bullets and it says, the mission of the planning division is first bullet to honor and sustain our natural world. Well, to me, that's gonna be just words, that's not gonna happen unless the town manager indicates that that's a priority for the planning division staff and make sure that uh, it's appropriately staffed and uh, guided into that direction. And um, you know, we do have committees and things, but often they are um, uh, kind of you know, guided by professional management. And I think that, um, again, I really think we need to have this uh, much more open process, and in the end, you both get a better result, and everybody feels like they've been heard. Uh, I think that's, that will make most people you know, much happier. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Please. I'm Sarah Wilbur from Met Revolutionary Road, and I uh, think this is wonderful that you have this meeting. And I do regret that there is not a time when the 30th, uh, the half of whatever we are, 30th percent of the of our town, who are people who are a little older and who don't drive at night, and who don't usually get out to uh, meetings at eight in the morning. Um, I wish that there were a way you, you could meet with them. And I also think it's very important to remember that that 
third of this population, I think that's about the right number for of who are around who are past our uh, 60th or uh, 70th birthdays. Um, are for people who spend a lot of time. Sarah, you know we do have a meeting at noon tomorrow. <laughs> one is at eight, and another one is the, what time? They're both at, at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I thought yeah. they were both at night. That's wonderful. And we but, really have been trying to I think it's maximize I think, that. I just wanted to say as well that I think it's very important that um, the uh, new person be aware of the role that the older part of this population is very active in the volunteering work that goes on and uh, who are people who retire from the various committees that we've been on and move on to other roles. So thank you. Thank you. I have just one comment that I was wondering, since there are multiple meetings and there's gonna be a lot of different people, um, some people will come to all of them because they wanna make sure that they hear what others are saying. Are you gonna be able to, once you get a consensus of some of the common things that people are looking for that you might come up with a, uh, a document to share with us, like here's what we learned from the community and prioritize what you feel that we brought up is of, of importance that we didn't think of. I mean, I didn't even think of, and I should have, tourism is such a huge part of Concord in our history that those are things that I hope, there are other things that are, should be brought up that we may not be thinking of tonight. Uh, may I, I'm going to say, I probably should have said this up front, uh, one of the uh, things that MRI does is um, we produce a, a document that will be online, basically for candidates, that uh, several pages in length. It, it gives a little profile of the town, the history, some photographs uh, of the community. We'll have uh, the information that you need today, a, a, a very Three bulleted one page, three quarters page uh, bullets of the profile, the characteristics that we're looking for in the candidates. You folks mentioned today that we've heard from other board members uh, when Bob was interviewing them. And then we'll have uh, several pages of the challenges in the community. And that's really what I'm picking up here and writing down uh, the challenges. So my job is going to be to take the, the challenges that we're hearing about and uh, boil them down into four, five, eight, something, some number of, of uh, challenges that the potential candidates need to think about if they want to move forward. Because, you know, you, you have your challenges. It's an ideal community, triple aggregated, you know, uh, the history speaks for itself, the reputation speaks for itself. But there are challenges that individuals need to be aware of to see if their skills are up to the challenges or the opportunities that are here. So that's really going to be my job, and that's going to it'll be taken to the uh, research committee for their review and put online for the whole world to see. And all the we'll, we'll, we will, um, as if you go to the town's website, there's a town manager search committee committee place and we'll be happy to put all of that information up there so anybody can take a look at it if they don't know how to get a hold of MRI so it'll be there. <clears throat> also, I have my business cards here if uh, people want to uh, write to MRI specifically, you can write to me or you can write uh, to MRI. Now writing MRI is different from writing to a member of this, uh, of this public body. You can write something, as you probably know, write an email to a, a town manager, to a select board member, to a member of this committee. It's a public record. Disclosable, all that. If you want to write me something, I'm not a public official anymore, thank God. <laughs> so you can write me, and you can tell me what you really think. Uh, you can write me. <laughs> <laughs> but the folks out here who are public officials uh, can write either me on my business cards here or can you write uh, MRI and MRI is MRI go MRI go dot com and uh, you know under the you know, top contact us click on that write a note relative to Concord, 
here and myself in our confidential channel. We already have one, I'm not going to tell you what it was about, but people already, uh, at least and I know there is one person that's found their way to us via the MRI website. And, and again, the uh, the website information of MRI and the email address, if you want to contact them, is on the town's website. So you could just go to the town manager search committee and you can find all that relevant information there. <clears throat> so let me, Buzz, thank you for serving as a moderator tonight. More importantly, thank all of you for coming. Uh, I hope you let other folks know that weren't here tonight. Two more sessions, one tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock at 55 Church Street, and the second one tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock at the Harvey Wheeler Community Center. So thank you all very much for coming. Just a second, Rainer. It just interests me as I'm sitting here to think that we're holding this meeting with a painted allegory of our town. <laughs> and you can see in this painting of 13 people here, four are paying attention to the business at hand. <laughs> Three of them are having a separate meeting on another topic, and all the rest are standing around. With that? And they're all guys. Yeah. And they're all guys. Well, thank you for that closing remark. Good night.